This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. We are talking about Rex Hewerman on this segment with retired FBI and Chief of Counterintelligence Behavioral Analysis Program, Robin Dreek. As we delve into this area of the case. What's your thoughts on the attorney, John Ray, who's representing some of the Gilgo Beach murder victims, expressing concerns about her, in his words, conning the public with the GoFundMe that is out there. Now, it should be noted it was not initially set up by her, but she is certainly receiving funds from it, and it's been going up quite substantially. His point being that they have wealth, they have money, they may not appear to, but he believes they're worth quite a bit and have property in multiple states. Is it appropriate to have a GoFundMe when you do have resources at your disposal right now? That's a good question about the resources at her disposal, because I did hear, again, I don't know whether it's fact or fiction, did hear that since he she's covered under his medical mm-hmm. and I think he's losing his medical because of this. Yeah. And so with her cancer treatments, she might lose that and her medical capabilities take care of that. And I don't know what the government sees from him either, even though they do have money. Was it in her name? Is she joined? You know, so I think there's a lot of admin admin and logistics kind of things. Now, that's the realism side. Who knows about the GoFundMe? A lot of people set these things up in the names of others just to make money and bilk people out of money. So sure. who knows on that? But, but the potential need for it, I do think there is a potential need for it if she indeed still needs medical coverage mm-hmm. and it's not there for her. Sure. In that aspect, I totally understand. I, I just... Are we in a place where we're way too quick in society to try and put a Band-Aid on a huge problem or try and make people feel better with things like GoFundMe? Are they used too much? And in some cases, you know, emotion plays a big deal and I'm going to look at this poor family, look at what they've gone through. I want to give them some money and it'll make me feel good about doing that and hopefully it helps them. But I would have legitimate concerns about where it's going. I mean, there's not a lot of oversight to it once it's there. And I would also have concerns about their 80 some thousand dollar tax levy that's against them that needs to be paid off. I would be wondering if some of this GoFundMe money, once it hits an account, is going to be taken by the government to pay off Hewerman's tax bill. Totally agree with you on two points there. One, I'm a pilot. And one of the things we say in aviation is there's no emergency takeoffs because every emergency takeoff will create an emergency landing guaranteed. And so you never have to rush to make a decision to do something in most cases. And this is definitely one of them, as you highlighted. And the second part of that, I also totally agree with people have an incessant need. And it's a human condition of ours of wanting to be connected want to be compassionate, want to tout that as not just as a altruism, but also for their own ego and vanity that they're able to make a connection and do these things. Anytime there's a tragedy, whether group or individual, a lot of people will come out to try to make those connections, both from a personal standpoint as well as a greater standpoint. So yeah, you're right. And without proper controls in there or knowing where it's going or even who organized it, a lot of fraud can take take effect. So yeah, yeah who knows what's going on. With I, 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 to each their own. If someone wants to contribute, that's obviously up to them. I would just say there seems to be a lot of at least maybe not stop signs, but yield signs on this where it's like until we know a little bit more about where exactly this is going and why, I don't know. I would be a little bit concerned about exactly how that would all be handled. They yeah. Can- and I'm sorry, just one one thing to interject on that yeah. one. I totally agree. So a lot of times I'm asked about deception indicators and is someone lying mm-hmm. and which you can very, very tell, you know, if people could really be good at detecting deception, people would stop asking about, can you detect deception? <laughs> but things that you can do to really slow things down or at least put, like you said, put your brakes on, that's what triggered my memory on this one is when you don't have a lot of clarity, you should be able to see clarity and transparency when these things pop up. And if you don't get them, that's when you got to slow down and say, whoa, hey, you know, 
if, if this is on the up and up, I should be able to have my questions answered quickly, efficiently, and transparently so that I no longer have questions. And if we're sitting here still having questions on who, what, where, when, and how with the money and the GoFundMe, that's a flag. And generally where you have one flag, you'll probably find two or three. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.